Hello and welcome to Ordinary People Walking an Extraordinary Path, a podcast series delving into the lives of individuals who have defied societal expectation and embarked on an extraordinary path despite their seemingly ordinary background. I'm your host, Sylvie Barbier, and today we have the privilege to be with our guest, Elizabeth DeBold. Elizabeth is trained in Harvard as a development psychologist. She specializes on gender identity and development and is the author of the book Mother Daughter Revolution from a Good Girl to Great Woman. She's passionate about how to overcome the difference between gender. Her path has led her to be part of a spiritual community. She's the senior editor at Evolve magazine and the co-founder of Emergent Dialogue as well as, as Evolve World. Welcome, Elizabeth. I'm really happy to have you today. Thanks, um, Sylvie. And it's, great, to, it's great to be here. <laughs> yes, we have the internet to get to connect throughout the world. I'd love to start by asking you a little bit like, what are you currently working on and passionate about at the moment? Oh, that's nice. Um, I'm, I'm working on, on two books that really kind of point to to what I'm passionate about. One is a book about about gender and the kind of confusion around that and and the the deeper deeper development that I think we 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 is opening up for us as women and men. And um and I'm also working on a book about our work with emergent dialogue. Um, and right now we're in the in the process of of creating a, uh, a an online. Do you need to stop? <laughs> okay. so you were just saying that um, you were working on two books. One yeah. book on the gender identity question. Yeah. And and, uh, and the the deeper the 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 deeper uh, the deeper transformation that I think we're looking at that all of the confusion that around gender right now, I think is, is pointing to, uh, but also I'm working on a, a book about the work that Thomas Steininger and I do and our, our team do called emergent interbeing and emergent dialogue. Um, and we're, we're, we're also, um, together. And, and I think one of a deep interest is to create spaces for the sacred in a in a postmodern open pluralistic culture. How do we create places where people can experience that which is untouchable, that which is uh, profound, that which is actually life itself? Speaking of your the name of your your organization that that actually touches the 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 quality the preciousness of life itself how do we create spaces for that in that are not dogmatic that are not arguing for some version of god um, but where people are able to come together and find sacredness between them mm. And I Thank think that, sharing that, yeah, I think that's, I think in whatever it is that happens to humanity and, uh, and, and in this next wave of, of civilization, if we have one is, uh, I think has to be rooted in something very much deeper than the materialist culture that we've created. And I think that's an understatement. Yes. And can you tell me a little bit about what led you, because what I hear both in those two books, you're interested in kind of something deeper that unifies or and connects us to life itself and, and, and goes be, beyond the difference. Can you tell me a little bit how this inquiry about wanting to find what you unites us, connects us, have started for you? I think it started really when I was, um, I think there are two things when I was very, from a very young age, I think, um, seeing my parents 
be in such a destructive relationship pattern and seeing in the the culture of the 50s and 60s the 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 roles that women played the contempt that women had for men the contempt that men had for women there that 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 touched me deeply that felt so awful you know how do we how does it happen that two people like my parents fall in love and want to be together and then end up in a certain sense despising each other you know how does that happen and how there are structures in society that that foster that kind of disrespect and <clears throat> uh disconnection that uh particularly then that that women tend to think of men as clueless emotionally they don't get it they you know they're 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 out to lunch um and and men think women women are inept are you know particularly back back uh back then are inept and 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 silly and running after shiny things and you know uh it, it's like wow we have a culture that's based on on stereotypes that are that are very that are so degrading to our humanity and that was something that i felt as a kid as a child mm -hmm. and uh and then i had a spiritual experience in when i was 16 15 16 um that that opened something for me opened a, a perspective that I didn't know what it was. I didn't. I had no idea what it, what what this what what this happening was. It happened when I was given an assignment in my English class to write write poetry. Our teacher said, <clears throat> "You can't understand poetry unless you you try to write it." And so she gave us. She said, "By Thursday, everybody is supposed to submit. You know, submit at least one poem." And and I. We lived in a, a small house that had very little privacy. And I snuck out of my bed at midnight the day before the, the assignment and, and snuck downstairs and sat on the floor in the dining room looking out the window at the moon. And, and all of a sudden, poof, something cracked open. And, and, I, and then I wrote and uh, my my teacher was was really taken with what I wrote. And that that was a fork in the road for me that gave me an identity and a, and a capacity to express um, things that were that were meaningful to me um, and questions that I had about life. And th that that really opened opened a, a and it also gave me an experience of unity an experience of the non-separation of everything. And that was has been uh, in many ways a North Star in my entire life since then. Thank you for sharing about this uh, key experience. You, you said the word, it gave you an identity. In which way did it give you maybe a new identity from the one you had before that experience? Well, I, I um, this this teacher was so touched by what I wrote that she she literally, I mean, so I come from a family where no one's gone to college, no one went to university. My mother graduated from high school, which was a big deal. Um, uh, it 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 gave I I was a reader from a very young age. Um, it was a way for me to escape and and but it opened up worlds for me and i i found in in this writing and this teacher taking me under her wing um you know she said you should become part of the literary magazine you should do, you know I, 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 i'm the faculty sponsor i'll bring you on I, you know she was she opened something for me that was like oh and i found that i could touch people mm. by by what I wrote 
that that uh, so it gave me an identity as somebody who who could touch things in 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 life and share them with others and that felt that was something new that was like wow this is this is a gift I don't mean that I'm gifted but it's a it's something to give yes and it yes. gives me a place amazing thank you for sharing that and can you tell us a little bit more about the social um context in which you grew up you mentioned that none of your family went to university like what for the people who didn't grow up when you grew up like what was the world like a little bit what was also maybe the values of your family at that time well i mean i was raised uh catholic and uh, my grandmother my, my mother's mother was was very very devout and my mother was a frightened kind of superstitious catholic you know that if you do the wrong thing god will punish you that kind of a kind of christian um so you have to make sure you do the right thing or else you're going to get in trouble um mm. it it's it's interesting my uh i mean so this is I grew up at, at the point where feminism or women's liberation became was was a thing or started to be a thing in culture. And now it seems so passe or it's like, okay, yeah, we're all equal, right? Not exactly, but that's a different story. Um, but uh, I guess there the options that that women had at, at that time, they were opening up, but it was still the most important thing. And I think in some ways it still is um, to have a, a partner, you know, get married, have a child or many children and have and have a house. Like my mother was was house obsessed was what this was her identity was the physical house that we lived in, you know, that, mm. that, that, that gave her meaning. Um, even at the a point of near death, she saw a room that was decorated beautifully in, in her, mm. in, in, in kind of a, when she was in, in between life and death, she saw this fantasy of this room because it, she's so identified with having a house. And actually my brother asked her what made her happy in her life and she answered to have a house to have a house so it's very materialistic mm -hmm. i mean it was still a time after the the great war where where america was like assuming its its dominant position in the world and um this was the the kind of backlash of the next generation saying yeah, you may have done that, but the world that you've created is is uh, is brutal. Um, I mean, people may not be aware that that these these arguments about capitalism and and the the brutality of American culture, the kind of grossness of it, um, go back to the to the sixties and even before that, they go back to the early early twentieth century and the late nineteenth century. These these have a long history. And uh, so, I mean, it was the expectation was that you, you would, as particularly as a as a girl that you would grow up and if you went to college or, or university, um, in America, they always speak about college. Um, in in Europe, it's more university. Um, that if you did that, that that the point was to get a better kind of guy. You know, the point to the reason why you went to school was either to have something to fall back on if something happened or um, or to 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 move up a social class. And I mean, women are trained to seek a partner who has a, a higher level of 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 income, uh, a higher class status than they do that. that that's the dominant narrative around yeah. romantic romantic love that's what you're that that that's how women advance in society and that was my mother's wish for me 
Mm. And uh, <laughs> when I was getting my my doctorate and ended a relationship with a wealthy lawyer, she told me that she said, the more education you get, the stupider you become. <laughs> Yes, for her, it must have been a shock, right? It was terrible. And, yeah, it was terrible. And how did you, uh, that story is very interesting because I think one, one thing I'm also interested in is how did you defy social and family expectation? Because in what you just shared, your mother had a expectation that you would therefore marry this person or and not break up with him at least. And, and how did you deal with uh, the social and family expectations? I, I mean, there was enough of a stream of, of women doing different things or, or, or staking territory that had been uh, forbidden to them. There was enough of a stream that I felt culturally supported um, and also was an activist uh, in it early on in my in my 20s so um so i felt i was part of a community of women who were who were raising questions about how how is this whole thing set up and mm. uh i mean that people talk about uh i'm going to forget the term um the interse yeah intersectional politics i mean the, there were the the conversation was very much about the relationship between race and class, particularly class and gender, um, how these things uh, create create the world that we live in, and uh, uh, in its in its uh, negative aspects or in it in its uh, cruelty. Um, so I felt I felt supported in 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 a certain stream of the culture. And, but in terms of, of the, the relationship with my mother, I, it, it's interesting. I, I, or my family, my, my, my father, my father wasn't so much a part of this. It was more my mother, you know, wanting me to get married and, and so forth. But, um, I think I, I mean, what, what it, what it, my experience of, of the dynamic was that she was betraying me. Mm. That her wish for me to be married almost to anyone, <laughs> mm. you know, it's like, get met, just get married. Like when I, I remember talking about this, this wealthy lawyer, I said, mom, but he and I are having trouble talking to each other we we're, we're we're not we're not in sync we're not we're not living and she said you get a big house and then you stay on one side and he stays on the other yeah. you know it's just get married and get married to somebody who's got money so that you can do so that you can do what you want you know then you could do what you want you could just live separate lives but i'd be taken care of Mm. And, and that always, that felt to me, and, and this occurred at, at different times with different relationships or whatever, um, it felt to me like a betrayal, like she was selling me out, that, that yeah, she wanted your material security was the key, thing, key, her key concern. That's right. For you. And, and so I hear there's a shift of value actually between your, your mom's generation in a way the value she had, which is like, I need to give, I want my kids to have material security. And for you, you were going on the path to look for another type of connect, like you had a shift in value also yeah, of that's what right. you were seeking. And so what were you seeking that had um, you decline what your mom wanted for you? Uh, I don't know what I was, I was, I, I, I look back and I see that I was following a thread. Yeah. Um, but at the time, I don't think that I fully knew. Um, mm. I really wanted the answer to the question about how we become so separate. How do we become mm. so separate as men and women in culture? Um, 
and I, I, well, I wanted, I was conscious that I, I wanted to, um, to understand how to, how to interrupt this kind of cycle that, mm. that, uh, that, that that we're in or that we we have been been in the cycle where uh yeah where where f the feminine and masculine get get replicated over and over and over again and it's so hard to 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 shift that um and what i mean by that is not not uh something against the feminine or masculine although I don't find them useful terms. Um, I, I don't mean something against that, but how can, how can each human have access to the full range of being human? Because basically feminine and masculine divides our humanity in half and says this half is, is, is for women or people who are biologically fe female or assigned female at birth. And this, this part is for, for, for for the the males and it's it's so false and yet it's such a strong belief meaning that that women express things that are have anger women have violent tempers you know that are supposed to be only what men do um men men are caring men care about life and to assume that they're more aggressive, or, or and and that there there is data that supports this kind of binary, but there's also thousands of years of culture, and mm -hmm. and there's uh, so I, I I wanted an answer, I wanted to know where is it that you intervene to create a different culture, how does that happen, how do mm -hmm. how do cultural innovations happen, what what makes it possible for change to to occur? Um, so I I was I was conscious that this was the question that I had from probably my my late twenties or my mid twenties that this this is what I wanted to know, and I kept going I kept going from one place to another trying to find an answer, and it it kept taking me deeper. Mm. What I hear is that out of a desire to heal a certain family pattern of strong division between the masculine and the feminine, your father and your mother not getting along, led you into this kind of uh, um, path and going deeper and deeper to what actually um, unifies us all as humanity, as living beings. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and... And I think it started with my family, but it also was such an evident pattern in culture. Yes, in society. Yeah, it was like yeah. this is not this. My my parents are not unique. This is yes. this is this is this kind of division is replicated. I mean, and it's I still see still see it now. I mean, it's very still very present, and not just with like the Trumpists. But with with progressive so called progressive you know innovative meta modern people. Yes, I, I might go off a little. Some of you, what you said really hit home for me personally, um, because maybe just uh, uh, you know I I grew up in the in the Paris neighborhood of uh, uh, immigrant working class. Um, where it's called the banlieue where people are don't want to go over and there was a really that sense that is true that for for me as a woman i wanted to get out of there it was really clear i did not want to stay there and for me as a woman to get out of there like one path was romantic love to to mm -hmm. in as you said like marry up you know mm -hmm. and um but funny enough my mom didn't have dad as much I, my, my mom said two things about my dad your dad was very handsome and very smart and at mm -hmm. the time she met him he was doing quite well but in a way I think my mom supported my dad far more they divorced and she supported me financially and she's a very independent woman of like I don't need your dad I can 
I can do it myself. But it was, it almost produced something reverse into me of like, but why did you choose that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> why did you choose someone who uh, struggled to look after, look after you? So it, 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 uh, in a way, my mom might be far more pro in some dimension progress very progressive and it created in parts of me something more conservative mm -hmm. because I, I I saw some of my mother's friend who had the husband who earned the money and they didn't have the financial pressure and and I saw that my mom would have to struggle to be a single mom you know mm -hmm. making meet sense um and uh I think some of the things you you share like is true of the dynamic between the masculine and feminine is very deep and Personally, in my work, I've been looking at a lot of like uh, mythologies mm -hmm. of, you know, the archetypal mythologies of uh, Psyche and Cupid, mm -hmm. which is the ultimate. And I saw how much um, this is the grandmother mythology of a lot of Cinderella, Snow mm -hmm. White, and and how much it um, it influenced me as a little girl and now as a woman and to be uh, to take awareness in that. And um, uh, because my mother was, a, how you say, a, a, a tour guide in the Louvre at some point. Mm -hmm. So she would bring me there and tell me all the stories of those myths. And those stories had um, had a huge impact. And I now use them to help me navigate to understand how much this archetype of mm -hmm. what a woman is, what a man is. Um, but funny enough, my favorite one was Athena because she was both mm -hmm. the... the the goddess of wisdom and of war. I was like, you can be wise and a warrior. That's incredible. That, <laughs> which was not available in, you didn't have figure like that when I grew up. Mm -hmm. Of, uh, it was only existed in this in this goddess in the museum. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite. It's it's true that the how the, our culture, how much our culture influenced what we think is available and what we think we can have as a path. Mm -hmm. uh who who we become and uh going deeper into those roots uh and even having awareness of that because very taking awareness in that is so is is a journey in itself mm -hmm. absolutely how much it conditions us mm -hmm. um and like this is um you, you mentioned one thing that allow you said you were part of a community of other women who uh who saw that it was possible to take a different path. I'd love to also inquire with you what, um, how much community life and um, has influenced your path or what role it played on, on your path. Well, I, I, I had a very uh, strong community of, of friends um, in, in the National Organization for Women, and uh, I was I was in my in my mid twenties. I was a, a uh, and I think I I, I was a vice president of the for programming of the National Organization for Women in New York City, and I think. Um, I think this is, and, and this is this is interesting. I, I I think that this is part of of what is so needed is to be, and I think this is why activism is is such a powerful, uh, uh, so powerfully attractive to people in their twenties, their teens, in their twenties, because to find a community of like minded people who care about changing the things that you feel need to be changed in order to be able to enter adulthood in a meaningful way. Um, that is a very powerful thing mm. to have, to have that community of people who are questioning, um, who are engaging in different discussions wow. and, and practices and so forth, um, who are thinking up ways to disrupt the status quo or what, whatever, um, that, that's, a, that's, uh, I think critically important and to, otherwise you're, you're like an atom sort of adrift in space. There are so many options, so many, uh, so many things that, 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 that pull your, 
pull your attention. Um, and I, I, I also feel that, that, that each of us has a question that we, that we are asking in our lives. Mm. And it often, it often takes quite something to, to find out what that question is. But it, it's an important engagement uh, in, in, with, with oneself in life, particularly in, in, your, in the 20s. Um, yeah. You know, it's like, what am I, what am I here to do? What is it that I'm deeply curious about or what bothers me? You know, what do I need to, to have an, an answer to? And uh, there are the, the answers that our culture gives are, are so superficial and, and mm-hmm. frightening. Um, you know, I need to know how to make my, my, how to apply makeup so that I look really great on TikTok. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's a horrifying, <laughs> um, I mean, playing with, with it is one thing, but, but having that become something that you feel that your identity is shaped around or who you are is shaped around is, is so devoid of meaning, which is where you get, uh, it's, it's the ultimate end of the meaning crisis in Western culture. Mm-hmm. Um, but so that was very important. And then I, I did join a spiritual community um, and that, that, that was, uh, I, I lived in community in one way or another for 17 years. And that, that was a, a, a very focused time of in, engaging with reaching deeper dimensions of self in order to transform relationship and and collectively. I mean, the reason why I was attracted to this teacher was because he said he wanted to bring a group of women to enlightenment together. And part of what I had seen in, in also there was a community of women in, in around my, uh, my academic mentor, Carol Gilligan. Um, we were a community, I would say. And and yet, in, with with the National Organization for Women, with the community at Harvard, um, there were these very deep uh, fault lines between women. This very deep competitiveness, very deep, uh, a very very deep competition, and that would show up in in these these moments of of need or. Uh, and so his, his saying, let's create a community in which this fundamental tension between women is gone and there is a ground of, 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 of love, but I don't mean romantic love and I don't even mean felt love, but, but a, 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 a being that is love between women this is that that was like that resonates with me we have to go that deep in order to shift something in women um that that takes us beyond this kind of competition and uh yeah disrespect it was interesting i i just the other day read an article by um haberman about haberman i think that's his name um who is the Stanford professor who's, there's Haberman or Huberman, um, Stanford prof- professor who's this self-optimizing guy and so forth. And he was, he was engaging with, in relationship with six women, all of whom were basically led to believe that he was being monogamous with them. And it, Yeah, I think Rufus just read that article. Yeah, but what was so interesting about it, because 10 years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, the women, the women would have would have not felt betrayed if they found out that they they were the one that he was cheating on against his his full time girlfriend. But when 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 a woman finds out that she's being cheated on, even if she's doing cheating at the same time, 
that that that's when women would 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 get outraged. Mm. Do, you, do you understand what I'm I'm saying? It, it's like I know that he has a full time girlfriend. Yes. But but that's okay until I find out that there's somebody else, and then it's like, <gasps> how could that be? That's terrible. But these women, these women met each other, mm. and and basically supported each other in kind of dealing with the level of deception that they had been exposed to. Mm-hmm. And they, they became, they became de- it sounds like they've become very good friends, which is, or maybe not even friends, but, but deep allies. Mm, yes. And I thought, wow, that's different. That's different where women don't divide at, at this revelation, but come together that's that's a very powerful and 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 quite exciting to me development it's saying my worth is not dependent on his behavior yes and which is also what hillary clinton said about her husband mm. and that was the piece that many women couldn't couldn't tolerate at, actually at the time Mm-mm. you know that that she could say that she could say you know this is his problem. This is not my problem. Yes. Um, and it, it, of course, it creates problems for me, but it is not in, something inherent in me that is broken by his lapses of judgment and and his addiction to sex. That's not my problem. And these are powerful statements that that are that are really transformative of this, this core dynamic of, of, of uh, competition, making it less so, which is, is, is a cultural shift, is quite a cultural shift. Yes, sorority, you would say. Yeah, yeah, create a real sisterhood. Mm-hmm. But that's, uh, yes. It, yeah, I would say that, so community has been very, very much a part of my my life, and uh, and finding ways, yeah, developing ways to be with each other that are that are from a different ground than separation. That's been been what my trajectory has been about. And yes, to go and how how does that now show concretely in your life in the sense this experience of living in community with other women um, pursuing enlightenment as a collective and um, how has that changed yeah in a way how does that show up now in your life compared to before like if you said you know before this this is how things were and now that i've done this experience this is how life or I show up in this context uh, in a way because I think it, it brings it um, I'd love a, a concrete uh, example well I mean I, I I would say I still live in community mm. you know and the community is is about this about interbeing and interbeing mm. is what this is 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 what I was uh, speaking to that uh I, I mean, I live with my partner in in a in our small center where we do this work, and up until fairly well, I guess it's now it's now a bit of time, but uh, um, we have we have we're not living together at at the moment with other people, um, but we live. We have people in in the immediate village surrounding that who are uh, who are connected with with who are part of this work, and we have a, a core group of 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 people who are dedicated to to this transformation of our being rooted in separateness to being rooted in what we call interbeing. Mm. And that's our that's our work. Mm. And I yeah, we have weekends where we're together. We have uh, two retreats a year where we explore this. We uh, we have 
several rings of community that that we're that we are part of mm. and i i uh the idea of living in a house that is my house and and is my uh i mean this is sort of the opposite of my mother yes. <laughs> um that is that is the you know private simply private space uh and for I, that i i i don't want that mm -hmm. i'm it, it's the, the space where i live is there's private space within it but the space where i live is is a uh, public space we, for example we don't have a living room we have that's where we do our meditation and right now there's a candle burning in there 24 hours seven days a week for that is online for our meditation chapel that people who are part of our work can access and meditate whenever they want but the it sits here mm -hmm. and it's that i think we're 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 looking for ways to to create community online but also that have a very much a, a living face-to-face -face component and i um i like to maybe go back a little bit um because you just mentioned like that's the opposite of your mother like your mother would have liked just her house her her dream what was so important to her was her house you also have siblings like do you, like uh, how have your siblings gone on their path um cuz often siblings grew up in the same social context mm -hmm. and similar family and i'm always quite curious about how so within the same family um different different members take different path i'd love to hear if your siblings also have um taken a, a similar inquiry for their for themselves no they haven't um my i have one my older young i'm the eldest in the family and uh my uh my oldest younger brother died at, at the age of 44 um and and then there's another my other brother who who has found who has created his own life in uh i mean he, he's in an unconventional relationship he has two sons he has his own bike shop um like he's created his own world out of his passion for biking which i which is is unique and yeah he's not he's working for himself he's he's doing uh yeah he's he's created he's created a real community of people in reno nevada who who want to who are interested in bikes he's he's really he's this he's a community leader and in in this passion that he has for nature for being in nature and biking and all camping and all that good stuff so he's made he's made his his passion into what his life is about you know what he, what he does and my sister my sister and and this is a, a cause of of uh i would say pain for me my my sister uh my mother put us always in competition mm. she, i mean she's much younger than i am she's nine years younger than i am and so i was out of the house and never really returned at, when she was nine but after I left my mother, my mother's fantasy and, and projections on me about who I could become or that she focused on, she kind of dumped on my sister mm -hmm. and my sister then to please my mother or to, to get attention from my mother became what she thought my mother wanted and who she thought I was, but through my mother. Mm. like somebody who was just concerned about fashion and uh you know my sister got married fairly young without a lot of relationship experience 
-hmm. you know, it's sort of like, okay, I'm 20, 26 or something. I should, I better get married. I'm seeing this guy. Um, they're still together, but it, uh, I feel that the creative options for her life, she, she, uh, in order to get my mother's approval, she kind of shut down on those. And that, that I feel, I feel sad about. It's painful. And so you feel like in a way she, she was looking more for your mother's approval and, and you were able to like be more free from that. And you mentioned earlier that being part of this community of, of other women help you to kind of face this, like confront disagreement, um, or disapproval and like was maybe your sister having less this uh, community or support um, for her to be able to t um, to, to face your to to not, not needing your mother's approval as much um I don't know I mean I, I don't know if uh, I think that that um, I think that being the one that that uh, I I mean this is part of I think what is painful about choices that we make as as very young and very unconscious. Yes. That you know she wanted wanted yeah wanted my mother's my mother's love and to to have that what she thought was. That she needed to be married, she needed to have a child, she needed to have a home, and and then my my mother in in many ways ultimately betrayed her. So um, she had a child, and my mother never visited, almost almost mm -hmm. never, very 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 rarely visited. And the thought that my sister had that my mother would be helpful to her, and and that they would bond in in my mother's being a grandmother and, and I mean, they, they lived a thousand miles apart, but that, that they would, that this would happen or it, it didn't happen. My mother didn't want it. And, mm. and that was a shock to my sister because it, it would be what you would expect. Yeah. She, she set her life on this track and then yeah. uh, it turned out differently than what she expected. Yeah, my mother just my mother just didn't show up. And because you in your share, there's a lot of this kind of in the way transmission between different generation, but also tr um, transcendence between you and your mother. And what do you see currently with, you know, the new generation, the postmodern generation and the boomer modern generation? Like, what do you see at stake or uh that is there in the future? Well, I, I mean, I think this is, it's interesting because you mentioned before and I didn't pick up on this, but it's important. Um, I think the, the part of my generation that was engaging in feminism, engaging in political activism, uh, anti-war, anti, you know, pro-civil rights, that, that whole milieu was the, the the beginning of a of a uh, cultural cultural move into postmodernism. Mm -hmm. So the deeper conflict between myself and my my mother is really a generational one between the the, the shift between modernity, a pure modern expectations of achievement and material security. Yes. And uh, as you pointed out. Um, and now between, between now we have shifts in, in, in postmodern generations. So yes. postmodern boomer parents, um, have, are, uh, are, are that their, their kids are also postmodern. Yes. But they're, they often have uh there's there's often different different themes different uh different questions that they're asking um and i think the 
one one is uh, basically recognizing that 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 the the kinds of opportunities that we had as boomers and at, in this first kind of large cultural wave of of postmodernity are very different than what what the next generation has inherited and i think yes. that that's and i think that that's a a, a, a real source of source of tension if not conflict between between the generations can you say a little bit more what I hear from you is that probably the boomer generate the first postmodern boomer generation there was still a sense of like growth and possibility yeah like I, I know that from my dad when he grew up there was he could get a job you know there was no problem getting a job there was a sense of like things will still get better um and, yeah. and maybe the sacred the sacred cow of growth infinite growth they they still had that sacred cow of modernity uh, then, mm -hmm. but now this generation of postmodern is really confronted with the limits of growth and right. the the impossibility of growth. Like no, we 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 can't we can't continue with that sense of of growth, and um, I I think it's a it's a difficulty of a mindset shift maybe for the boomer to look at that i think i sense that sometimes there's a um a sadness to for the boomer generation to see like oh it might not be better for my children mm -hmm. um because you as a parent you always want to feel like you know your children are going to do better than you um mm -hmm. and it, it's something to reconcile with and i i i sense that probably for the this this other generation of postmodern there's a need to there's maybe anger and a need to mourn for mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. fact that we were given a dream and we're not going to have it we were mm -hmm. given the dream of things were going to get better but it ain't happening mm -hmm. um and yeah. that leads to uh attention mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think that's right and uh, and also added to to it, something that we we talked about before we started this recording, that uh, that that the um, uh, that the boomer message to to its children is is you know just follow your bliss. You can you know, you can be whoever you want to be. You can do whatever you want to do. You just have to find out what your passion is. And while while finding what your what your question is, which is what I I said before, is 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 utterly important to living a meaningful life. It's not that that if you follow your bliss, everything is going to be taken care of. Yes. And that's that's quite a boomer message. Mm. You know, like just it, just you know, do what you want with your life, but, but then who pays your rent? You, it, you know, it, this, it, it doesn't, uh, and then the, the, the kinds of jobs that are available end up, you know, it's like you, how many brilliant people are baristas, mm -hmm. you know, in Starbucks, it's, it's, um, I mean, I think my generation, of course, you had to you had to figure out how you were going to support yourself, but there, there were, it, there were different opportunities, um, and I, I yeah, I, I think that's a real tension. That's a and real. How tension. do you, and what do you see could help, um, maybe uh, reconcile or heal the tension between generations? I don't know. I think boomers being more, more willing to take on responsibility for, in a sense, say, yeah, things were really different, and collectively we've, we've not addressed, addressed the source of 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 this the trouble. But I don't know that, that anyone could. I think that's I think that's the, the the dialogue is I think that's part of what's difficult is it's not like you can say to your parents um, you know you should have fixed this 
that we're talking about running into systemic problems with modernity per se. And modernity has been working its way to this point of crashing for centuries. And it's, it's and it, based on an epistemology of division and separation and domination. So you- The crash was inevitable, like yeah. really damn in French. And, yeah. And it yeah. sucks for this generation that they're, they're experiencing the crash. Yeah. Um, but I think there's, there's a lot of, uh, I think there's, there's, there's a lot of, I, I see a real movement, uh, in young people towards seeking meaning, seeking to understand more deeply, seeking the sacred, seeking, seeking places where they can, they can find, they can touch life. And, uh, I don't know if that will heal the, between the generations, but I, I think, uh, yeah, I, I think that's, that's a necessary part of, of the next generation's path mm. is to find and create and, and, uh, places for depth. Yes. When, when winter comes, you have to go deep to find yeah. a resource within the earth. Yeah, that's um, right. Is there any last thing you'd like to share with us before we complete? No, I, I, I don't. I don't think so. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth, for giving us this time and sharing with us your uh, life path for this inquiry. Uh, I hope it will help others. Uh, looking into their questions and how to engage with their questions. Um, I will, and uh, I maybe we'll have a second one because I have so many more questions about the two mm -hmm. books you're, you're currently working on. And I will complete thank the you. recording. Well, thank you, Sylvie. And I hope it helps somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, a bottle thrown to the sea. Yeah, let's see. <laughs>